And we'll open up our special meeting tonight on November 10th, 2022, 7 p.m. Uh, just to go over the preamble, as always, meetings normally held at the municipal office are being held remotely with adequate alternative means of public access and where required public participation provided in accordance with Chapter 107 of the Acts of 2022, uh, which extended the governor's March 12th, 2020 order suspending certain provisions of the open meeting law, MGL Chapter 30A, Section 20, until March 31, 2023. Um, meetings are typically broadcast on the Access Television as well. The remote meeting connections will, have been posted on the Deerfield website uh, for the last several days. So hopefully it looks like everybody has uh, gotten through and everything is good. Um, meeting attendees should mute their phones um, unless asking questions or commenting so we don't have too much background noise. And all attendees should wait to speak until all the participants are, are finished. Um, the Deerfield uh, meeting guidelines for all our meetings are we ask people to speak one at a time, follow the Deerfield code of contact of being respectful, considerate, courteous, concise, and non-repetitive. Um, I would also ask for tonight that we, um, uh, we have a number of things to go over. So please address myself, the chair, to be recognized to speak so we get everybody. And I'll look for hands up on the screens as well. And uh, unless presenting, please uh, keep your comments to a two or three minutes or less uh, time frame so we can move through it. Tonight we have, um, it's all old business, continuations of, of three major public hearings, but they may take us some time to get through. There's a lot, still a lot of details on some of these to, um, to work through. Um, so before I, we get into those details, I need to identify the um, members present for a roll call. Um, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin here. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby here. Ben Byrne. Oh, unmute was screwed up. Uh, ben Byrne here, sorry. <laughs> hey Ben, how are you? And Pete Lott. So we have a um, full contingency of the commissioners tonight. So that is good. Uh, the first thing we have to do for some housekeeping is look at the minutes from the October 27th, 22 uh, commission meeting. Um, as all, have the commissioners all received, had a chance to review? I see nodding heads. So any, uh, any comments on the meeting minutes as written? Any comments for revisions or? Are we uh, are good to go with those? So I see nothing from the commissioners. So I'd, I would accept a motion to accept the, minute, the meeting minutes of October 27, 2022. I'd like to make a motion to accept the minutes of our meeting of whatever that date was you just said. <laughs> September or October, wait. October 27th. October 27th, sorry. Right, right. Yeah, got it. Do I have a second? Sean Libby, second. Okay, the motion's on the table. Has been seconded. Any additional comment from the commissioners? If not, we'll take a quick roll call to accept the uh, October 27th, 2022 meeting minutes. Um, Kate Devlin? Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby? Sean Libby, aye. Ben Byrne? Uh, ben Byrne was absent, so I'll abstain. Got it. Uh, Pete Law, aye. So that passes uh, with three positives, one at abstention. So good. We can put that one in the record, Amy. All right. Now we can move on to uh, – there's no new business um, that popped up over the last two weeks. We seem to be meeting every week or two, so it's hard to keep up. Um, but we do have – the three agenda items for the um, continuation of old business. The first one on the agenda tonight is to reopen up the public hearing, uh, the public hearing continuation for a notice of intent filed by NUPRO for construction of a 124,680 square foot building, parking area, loading, dock apron, site lighting, site landscaping, utilities, stormwater management, riverfront resource area improvements on property identified in the assessor's record as map 168 
lot 21 and lot 21.2. Um, so let me just pull out my big old file on that. And um, do we have any updates from the applicant or the applicant's consultant? We, I know there's been a few things going on. So some updates for the commissioners would probably be a good idea. Mark, do you want to go or I can go? It doesn't matter either way. Um, do you want Greg to go? If he's on. Is he on the call? Yeah, I'm on the call, yes. Um, this is Greg Henson from Berkshire Design. Sure, Greg, Hi, Greg. why don't you uh, go first? You want me to go first? Yes, sir. Please. Okay. And just um, a note to everybody okay. that Berkshire Design is the uh, peer review company that was uh, um, contracted by the town for both stormwater and uh, wetlands uh, review. So, uh, Greg, go ahead. Thank you. So, we have we have worked uh, back and forth with both the uh, SVE and the applicant, and uh, they have uh, responded to all the concerns that we've had. So we, we have no further comments, and, and uh, th they have taken care of all the comments that we have provided. Um, I'll just do a rundown of the major comments that caused oh resulted in changes to the plans, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um Walt Smith and Berkshire Design requested that we show VHB's wetland D on the plan, which Walt Smith called out as a man-made drainage basin with um stormwater control. There's a drop inlet and a stone full bay. <clears throat> um he, at, uh, in his wetland report, he asked, uh, requested that it be shown on the plan and the commission decide whether or not they take jurisdiction of it. Um, we originally left it off the plan because the commission did not have or did not take jurisdiction of it when we um, permitted the Dumont project, which is just south of the new pro project. So we put that on the plan. Um, we went out in the field and conducted test pits to confirm the groundwater level. <clears throat> and we ended up raising the site a foot and a half um, to allow uh, ease, oh, to take care of Berkshire Design's peer review comments regarding the stormwater system. Um, it allowed us to daylight the stormwater <clears throat> Um, controls from the parking areas into the basins instead of having them go into um, dry wells. We eliminated the dry wells so there's no issue with discharging stormwater within the estimated seasonal high water table. We relocated the foundation drain to daylight towards the um, brook, and that's the major concern. Oh, that's the last concern that they Berkshire Design really had was the commission's feelings about that, since it um, requires a very small increase in um, disturbance of the riverfront. I think, yeah, it's 520 new square feet of disturbance. And this, uh, Mark, uh, this came from where? This came from one of the... Um... So originally we Drainage had line. Yeah, it was a comment. We relocated the foundation drain based on a comment from Berkshire Design. Um, they didn't. Uh, they thought that it would cause problems if we had it discharged to the basins. As if the basins filled up, water would back up into the foundation drain. With raising the building the foot and a half, it allowed us to daylight it towards the stream. Um, they then asked for detail for the foundation drain daylighting, and it's just a six inch pipe that would discharge to a riprap apron to prevent erosion going down to the stream. Um, as Bocchio's, um comments in the peer review that would 
improving the riverfront substantially over the existing conditions as almost the entire riverfront on site is degraded and we're going to mitigate that by allowing grass and plant um, shrubbery and trees within the riverfront to mitigate the disturbance and to repair the areas outside of the impervious area. Yeah, I want to look at the, the plantings a little bit in, in a minute, but if you go back to the detail in the daylight, what's the size of that riprap? I believe the riprap is six inch minus yeah so it's yeah you, you call it for six inch minus this is greg henson yeah yeah so it's, it's a good size stone that's not going to erode that will allow erosion of the bank and it's a length is two feet it looks like a two feet two foot. yeah like a two foot okay section Plus, okay. uh, this is Greg Henson again. Plus, it's foundation drainage, and it's it's very very little flow. It's just it's just intercepting any groundwater. So uh, we we have no concern that. Uh, plus, the invert of the foundation drain is now above estimated seasonal high groundwater. Correct. So that that alleviated our concerns. Okay. I'll go ahead, Mark. I got a couple other questions when you're done, but I'll well, wait. I can answer your questions. Um, back to the wetland D. Could you just show me that one more time? So where that's located, and and that is within, which it's within the wetland buffer. So it's within. Yeah, it's within the um, 100 foot wetland buffer. We are not directly oh i mean yeah we're not really impacting it we're doing a little swale that for the discharge of a western basin to it but as ward said it's a man-made detention basin with two i believe it actually has two concrete outlets and it has a drop i know it has at least one drop inlet that discharges down to the stream. Yes, and Mark, we uh, previously on the Dumont project to the south, we also have a stormwater easement that runs through there. There's an outlet overflow structure that ties into a pipe that actually goes into that detention basin or wetland D, if you want to call it. Um, if the pond ever fills up, that's where the water goes for the southern property as well. Yeah, and that's. The history of SVE working on the Dumont project is why we left that approximate location of Wetland D because VHB didn't really flag it. They just drew a square when they did their um, feasibility study for the property back in 2004, I forgot when it was. But when they did the feasibility study for the town they had the wetland scientists go out and delineate and they didn't even put wetland flags around it. They just kind of drew like a rectangle and just called it wetland D. Yeah. And it looks like from the top of the basin, so between three and four feet. Yeah, and there's um, existing old drainage from the pickle factory that enters it as you can see here. Will that and drainage I, continue or is that? No, it just drains into the basin and then there's an outflow here that goes down to <clears throat> riprap, I believe in like a level spread -o. that goes out to the stream or the brook. So is there any point source input then if you look at that, the right hand side of that? So there was something from the pickle factory. Is that the uh, the pickle factory would be this? Yeah. Um. Uh, zoom in. This um drainage manhole, which I may or may not be there. I don't know if Derek removed it. No, I never did. It's still there. Yeah. So this is was from the pickle factory. This 
actually collects all of the there's a swale that runs along the northern side of the property along the edge of um woods that goes into a drop inlet based on the existing conditions survey that we received that discharges and then there's a outlet structure that discharges um down the bank Mark, it might be easier to see that on the existing conditions plan. I don't know if you have that available. I do. Um, well, there'd be no real input to that at, at this point with your with your new design, Derek, or is that would only be? Um, a proposed base that is where overflow proposed basin goes, but that's where all of the existing drainage for like this whole section of the property already goes to. Yeah, you can okay. see there, there's some ADS pipe to the south of the property. Yeah. And that ties into about four catch basins, five catch basins, and they all drain into that pond into that. contention basin already. Those yeah. those will be removed from the project um, as we're upgrading our stormwater. So you won't have like any Right now, a lot of those structures are actually full sediment, um, so we're gonna we're gonna remove them, and then the only flow would be our outlet flow. If there's ever a reason where the pond needs to overflow, that would go into that detention basin. Okay. All right, that helps clarify what's going in there. Okay. Greg, in your letter of um, November 9th, item three, uh, says the applicant does yep. not explicitly respond to each of the conformance criteria outlined in the riverfront area development. Uh, and then you give another thing. Specifically, what was missing and how are, are those all addressed in your items A through H? Yeah, everything that, that that we put down as comments, we have uh, worked together back and forth, and um, you know we're we're pretty satisfied that all the our comments have been uh, addressed. Okay. And then uh, you had a section here in stormwater and traffic. Um, as you know, stormwater in, in Deerfield comes out of the in the planning board. In this case, of the uh, select board. Um, we are potential looking at because it's in the wetland area the conditions for ensuring um, maintenance um, would probably fall to the conservation commission at some point so we will have to make sure that uh, when we if we go ahead we will probably condition this that um, that we have reviewed and accepted the maintenance plan and there'll be a periodic um, reports necessary for that and I I don't have it in front of me but I'd have to go back to see what the uh, design was for the stormwater management plan and the and the O M of that um the stormwater management plan was updated and sent to Casey I believe okay like a digital copy if not I can send it again um within that it does have an operation and maintenance plan with uh somewhat routine reporting on that to to the town um you can condition that the um there is a section of the operation and maintenance plan for comments and um inspection like an inspection yeah. log yeah um that can be conditioned to be sent to the town okay after it's completed um okay Just and we follow the bmp requirements for maintenance on all of the BMPs used within the design. Okay. Yeah, I think we probably would look at, um, what is it a uh, annual review, semi-annual? Um, we don't, each BMP has different um, timeframes for inspections. So it's really, Based on that, we just state when they should be inspected and 
when they uh, inspected, they were supposed to fill out the inspection form and call okay. out which um, items they've inspected and write down any comments or issues that may have. have. Okay. Yeah, and that's something I review with all my clients upon project closeout before I even turn over the building. I go through their BMP plans and their stormwater management plans and say, listen, this is something you need to do. It's critical to the maintenance of your facility. If if your stormwater collection system is to clog, then you have bigger issues, right? So you have to follow these plans. And the guys over at New Pro are, are they keep, they run a tight ship over there. So I know they'll do it. Yeah, it, uh, it's good to know, Derek, we've had a, a a little sensitive to it because we've had some in uh, other areas that we've haven't been able to get the reports and the inspections and you know so if we can keep up with it and the uh, inspections and get the reports in it just makes everybody's life a lot easier so appreciate that so i mean this this is what's in the stormwater management plan this is the inspection report page that we have yeah and then we just go through each item or well, each bmp that's on site and say the frequency and the activity that needs to be done. Um, for the oil water separator, Berkshire Design did have a comment that the polluted water or sediment needs to be disposed of properly. So we added that to the um, long-term operations and maintenance plan. Right, okay. So we'll check, we'll look at that. We'll look at potentially getting a copy of the report sent to the towns, but um, Obviously, your your log and inspection logs will be maintained on site. Okay. Anything else from Mark, Greg, or Derek as the applicants? Um, no, uh, I'd li just like to say, you know, we did receive select board approval at our last meeting. Um, I appreciate this special meeting. It means a lot to the client and myself especially this time of the year. So thank you for taking time out of your busy schedule to see us tonight. Um, we'd be glad to answer any more questions. I, I, I thought you had some questions on the plantings, but. Um, yeah, I have so my other sheet of paper. paper. Thanks for reminding me. You're welcome. So let's <laughs> talk about those. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I wanted to look at the uh, the plantings, the revegetation, and, and maybe uh, and, uh, I'll uh, also ask the other commissioners if they have any questions. But, um, you know, Sean, maybe look at the type and quantity here. And then I also wanted to take a look just at the erosion control sheet, Mark. Um, just wanted to verify a couple of things on that when you get to it. But we can start with the re the vegetation, the plantings. If you we can start there, that's fine. So, okay. Um, yeah, I just zoom in. We tried using trees that are um, common around here that work within wetland resource areas and same thing with shrub plantings as well. Um, this is the planting schedule. And then we try to use it as screening as well as um, filling in along the riverfront area and try getting a lot of plantings within um, the Riverfront. Where are you putting the, the pine? I couldn't find those on the, when I was looking earlier. Uh, the pines, are, we had a, a butter that wanted evergreens. <laughs> yeah, okay. So we added some, we got, well, we removed some of the blueberry bushes along the edge of the, infiltration basin here and replace them with pines. Sean, do you see anything else with the plantings, the species, the quantity, the types? No, you know, I'm unfamiliar with the with the English oak uh, and uh, with that particular dogwood. I'm assuming that the the one or one and a half inch caliper size. I don't know, the nursery, I'm not familiar with typical nursery stock, but is that typically at the four and a half foot like diameter breast height measurement or where is that in the? Um, I would have to check into that. I believe yeah, it's, it's probably standard. It's more than the first time I've seen it unspecified and, 
you know, um, my industry. Yeah, that's is, just a typical size that we've used. Yeah, um, it looked fine to me. Uh, both the numbers, I I looked at it and it seemed very reasonable. Nothing was, um, you know, not suited to the site. And uh, yeah, okay. I just googled it for you guys, and uh, a one to one point five is anywhere between eight and ten feet tall. If that helps. Oh, okay. All right. Yep. So pretty good size going in. Okay. Um, John, while you're speaking, do you have any other comments on the application as a uh, whole? I didn't. I thought it was pretty well put together. Um, and then I thought the peer review comments addressed everything that I, I hadn't thought to look at. So um, my questions mostly were about the plantings and they were mostly um, out of interest. So I thought it was okay. well done. And Mark, just before we go on to the other commission, if you could pull up the erosion, there it is, I see the erosion control plan. Um, so we're proposing all down gradient to have double erosion control of five oval and silt fence. Okay. Um, there will be two construction entrances. The catch basins that are within the site and outside will have, uh, there's not really many outside of the site. Um, they will have silt sacks in them during construction to prevent sediment from entering them. Um, any slope steeper than three to one will be, have, um, jute batting put on or some sort of um, matting placed over it to protect it. Um, and can you there. zoom that in a little bit? There was a couple of areas I thought I'd jot it down on some of the maps there and I can't find it. Here it is. Would you like me to zoom in on? Yeah, I'm just trying to find. I got a copy of the map. Um, no, I can't find it. There seemed to be a couple of isolated spots for um, where erosion controls were listed on the map. Are those just areas of kind of specific construction concerns, or was there? Now I don't find it. Um, reviewing it now, I've noticed I missed taking off two silt sack things, those two call outs for silt sacks that were for the, um, dry wells, but everything, all of the, um, other called out erosion control is areas where we want to protect. We obviously want to protect the, um, well and resource areas down gradient of the site, which is why we have um, double erosion control within those areas. And then we okay. are proposing straw matting on the steep slopes to prevent erosion from them and allow vegetation to take hold. Okay, so actually, so this is a, a, a an earlier map. So like on the west side here, um, there was three silt sacks initially in there that they're they're all gone now. Yeah, they should be gone. And the new one still has these two on the eastern side that I just I yeah. missed when I was going through the plan. Okay. But those, right. there's no dry wells anymore, so um those wouldn't be there, obviously. Yeah, okay. And this just then on the details of the um, the fiber rolls, um, you seem to have them staked every four feet, uh, or is it? Is inside two two by two times three foot stakes six six feet ten feet apart um, each bale. Um, 
I think in uh, our back spacing is four feet for the fiber roll. Yeah. Okay. I thought I saw that. So, so you got four feet. That's good. I think our kind of guidance in town is five and, and then the upper detail there, you haven't shown any real overlap of the ends, but um, I'm assuming all the, the waddles, the rolls get overlapped instead of just butted up. So there's no, no flow in between. Correct. Okay. So we'll probably add some of those. Um, we develop some specific criteria of, of um, erosion control materials and so forth. So that can be added, but I think everything else that was, those were the questions I had. There were some that still stack and why there were so many here and there and just the distances on those waddles. Okay. Um, Kate or Ben, don't want to bypass you. Any comments? actually addressed anything that I that I was thinking about I just I thought it was well done um, and, and appreciate the going back and forth with the peer reviewer yeah that was very helpful um, yeah same I think uh, I think that covered it okay thanks Ben Um, any other input from anybody in the public? I don't see everybody who's on right now, but any other, anybody else wants to comment? Okay, I see none, I don't see any hands up. Um, just look in again, okay. So we've gone through everything. Um, well, commissioners, what's, uh, what's your pleasure here? I don't know how to frame the motion um, for approval of the NOI. So I was hoping either you could um, prompt myself or if Kate has better experience or Ben um, wants to jump in. I know it's very specific, so I'm not the one to to make the motion. Well, I think, um, let's see, maybe Amy can correct me if I'm wrong. I think we can go ahead with a motion to either approve or deny, but if we approve, then I believe we have X number of days to um, put in conditions. And I forget exactly what that is, either 10 or 30, I forget. Um, but there'd be, I would say some, as we talked about, you know, Derek and Mark, some conditions on just the standard conditions that we would have for uh, roast control um, items. Um, I think there was a condition on the stormwater, oh, the stormwater o &M condition um, and reports. Um, so we would need some time to, you know, put that together. Um, before we finalize the the, uh, the, uh, the document, but I, I think Sean, you can we whatever you guys feel if you if you want to put a motion on to go one way or another, um, based on you know forthcoming conditions. Um, yeah, and w what we need tonight is to get Derek the approval to get moving, and the conditions forthcoming are mostly, made, you know, they aren't going to stop him from moving forward so um, yeah well, i can put those together pretty quick because uh, all the rose curl stuff is just kind of standard boilerplate stuff we have and then uh, right. just a few other things so sure. um yeah. commissioner i just have one quick question um, yeah for the fiber roll is there a minimum overlap you guys prefer or is there is it five two feet three feet just so if i do install the erosion controls i do it right the first time um, but, 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 um, I have, <laughs> I have too many things open here now to find that. Um, and I don't need an answer right away. I just was wondering. What do you typically do? Um, I've on DOT jobs, I've done like a, a three foot overlap when I, I work like past I was... DOT. Yeah. Well, three feet 
Is that what was? Uh, I feel like I can't. Have... I can't find that document right in front of me, but um, I had it earlier. I don't know where I put it, um, but we can address that pretty quickly. That um, seems more than sufficient to me. I would. Yeah. I would have walked it back to something like two feet. Is what I was more thinking okay. if I didn't have a guideline. I always proceed on the air cost or yeah. Side of so if that's fine with you. That yep. works for me. Yeah. Perfect. Okay. I mean, and the air staked a little closer with the four feet then requirements too. So I, good. Yeah. Um, I don't know where I put that. Okay. All so. right. I will. Uh, I would like to make a motion to um, approve the notice of intent filed by New Pro uh, for the construction uh, parking area, loading dock, siting, landscaping, utility, stormwater review, riverfront resource area improvements, uh, all on maps 168, lot 21, and lot 21, 2, uh, form 3, uh, with conditions to be um, detailed by the commission soon, or as soon as possible. Okay, I, th I think we can work with that. And it's, um, is there a second to that? Ben Byrne, I'll second. Okay. So there's a motion on the table that has been seconded. Um, there's a motion to approve the NOI as listed in the agenda. Um, and I'm paraphrasing here. Um, as submitted with the current current submittal um, dependent on um, conditions to be determined in the uh, in the near future within their within the required time frame okay so we'll take a roll call vote on that uh, Kate Devlin Kate Devlin aye Sean Libby Sean Libby aye Ben Byrne Ben Byrne aye uh, Pete Law aye All right, um, we'll get the uh, paperwork started, uh, the right forms filled out. Um, we'll add the conditions to to that. If you want to, if you want to review those right now, I I can probably pull them up if you give me a minute. But um, there's some of our our general boilerplate. Um, I was so organized, I had those right here. Okay, so while uh, Pete is looking, I will just uh, say that, yeah, I will make this a priority once I get the conditions to get the order of conditions in to, and uh, get it uh, done as quickly as possible. Um, so, okay, uh, Derek, Mark, I, I'm just going to read off another one. I, I don't want to show it specifically, but if you don't mind, I'll just kind of go through them and let you know. Um, you know, we'd probably have in there that, you know, members of the commission have a right to enter and expect and inspect, uh, want to be notified five days before any work activities um, prior to the installation of any work, all erosion control measures be constructed and is shown on plans, erosion control specifications provided in the NOI and the order will be minimum standards. Um, they need to be maintained uh, immediately after installation of erosion control. The Conservation Commission should be contacted to conduct a follow-up inspection to ensure the erosion controls have been properly installed. Um, actually, maybe uh, this one's probably okay to show. It'll be easy if I share my screen here. Um, can you see that? Not yet. Oh. 
Can you see it? Yes, I can. Okay. Um, so these are just some standard requirements, kind of, we pick and choose from these for the various projects. So some of these won't apply, um, but coming down into the, uh, in the area of being, having the right to, to come, to having a five day prior notice. Um, after the erosion control, we'd like to do inspection controls before um, activities start. We look for a 72 hour notice to that. Um, and they shall not be removed, shall we maintain, maintain until they approved by the commission to be removed. Um, sediment from the devices shall be removed in place of upland location in a manner that prevent later erosion. Um, hay bales are not permitted. Um, plastic netting um, is not permitted because of threat to wildlife. Um, only wattles and erosion control blankets, which you've outlined. Um, let's see. Stay, 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 stay. I'll be able to speak. Two stakes per bale, stakes within five feet, uh, 15 inches on the fabric fencing. Um, I don't see the overlap here. That's what I was looking for. I'm sorry. So pretty general stuff. I don't know if it, I, I know it's quick here and you've just taken a look at it while it's on the screen, but uh, any any comments at this point, Derek, or? Uh, my, only com my only comment would be, would you be willing to inspect the erosion controls on Tuesday or Wednesday of next week? Um, Tuesday, uh, I would, I will be available. Um, and I can check with the other members of the commission. Sure. Okay. And we'll get that uh, Amy written up. So we'll have that in place before we get out there. But yeah, we could. I can make that happen. Next week's fairly open. Perfect. Okay. All right. Sorry, I didn't have that up on the screen earlier. I thought I did. Uh, anything else on the new pro discussion? So I'll, I'll just lead it off by saying thank you very much. And um, what I'll do is I'll send the assistant building it. I, the assistant building. Um, I'm sorry, I can't remember your name right now. Amy. Amy, thank you. Yeah. I've met so many of you over the past two months. So <laughs> I will send Amy my cell phone number and contact information um, that she could share with the full commission. Feel free to call me with any questions and concerns at any point throughout the project. And uh, we'll work to make this as painless as possible. Thank you. OK, sounds great. Thank you, everybody. <laughs> Thank you. All right. That's that one. All right. Next up on the agenda is the um, public hearing continuation for a notice of intent filed by Daniel Hartman, All States Materials Group to make improvements to existing gravel road, including widening the road, replacing stream crossing, and constructing a pad site for parking at 901 River Road, map 21, lot one. Um, let's see, we got Dan Hartman, I see. Um, how are you, Dan? Doing well, doing well, how about yourself? Good, good. Um, we have Emily Stockman, who did the peer review and been working with you. Yeah, and uh, Peter, joining me today from Kleinfelder is uh, Sammy Pretzel, who's a project manager. Uh, yes, we've got okay. Stephanie Hubbard, who's a professional civil engineer, also project manager. Um, and we've got Emma, and forgive me if I, I've never actually said your name out loud, Maroka. Uh, she is the wetland scientist and a permitting professional as well. We do not have Eileen, who's been on um, every meeting to this point, unfortunately. Yeah, OK. All right. Let's see we're well represented there. Um, OK, well, let's pull that out. Um, 
Dan, if you or any of your representatives at the applica ap applicant want to give us a, any update, and then I will want to hear from our peer reviewer, uh, Emily Stockman, and then um, I believe we'll be, I think there'll be just some more detailed discussions, uh, detail review tonight, because I think we've made a lot of progress. It's been a few months <laughs> to get through this, but uh, I think we are we got to a, a plan that's uh, covered a lot of the basis and, and a lot of the concerns. So, um, Dan, if you want to. Yeah, I can certainly set the stage to kind of get yeah. us going. Um, so we submitted revised materials. I know, again, it was a little bit under, under the wire uh, yesterday. Um, and we do understand it was, it was a lot of material, but um, if you took a look at the plan set, we tried to just focus in with the re, uh, the revision clouds to just denote the areas of change so that the commission wouldn't have to just search and review every little detail. Uh, hopefully you found that helpful. Uh, as well, we provided uh, re, uh, res, a, re, a review response to, um, to the comments provided by Stockman Associates. Um, we did kind of start it off with more of a narration on the test pits and then just tried to cover a lot of the general discussion that occurred uh, during last uh, meeting in a few paragraphs uh, re re uh, regarding the culvert design. And then we did kind of go one by one to, to hopefully provide uh, you know, an adequate response to all the comments, including uh, references to any regs or sheet set, sheets in the uh, plan set, just trying to, again, guide everybody to in the essence of time and efficiency. Um, and we do believe we've achieved a proper response to those additional comments. Um, and at this point, Peter, I'd be happy to, we could go through Stockman Associates comments and, you know, it can re reference where the, you know, the responses are in our letter and kind of flip back and forth that way we can, um, it, it, you know, there may be a few on there if the board had a chance to review it that are pretty straightforward when you see the response and the and some some of the changes that were made. Um, I do agree there may be others that warrant a little bit more of discussion. So I'll leave that up to you, uh, how you want to administratively okay. conduct the meeting. Yeah, no, that sounds good. I do. Well, I want to hear from Emily Stockman from Stockman Associates for her view and then maybe go through um, her most recent submittal, which was dated November 2nd, as yeah. that's where I've highlighted a few things. Um, anybody else from your team, Danny, that you want to jump in now or do we want to? No, uh, I think everybody's Emily? just okay. here to fill uh, just a role of there a lot of specialized folks on the call. So Okay. Um, I, I unfortunately don't have all of the answers, so they're they're just here in case, so we can answer uh, any questions tonight. That okay, may great. Yeah. And I'll have you, if you know, I, I see you share the screen with the sheets, which is great because I I was not able to pull them up uh, today. I have various security things on my computer. I couldn't get through to them in right. time. Um, if you need um, anything, so. we've got everything that was submitted. Sammy's presenting. She has every item submitted. So if we need to reference anything, just shout it out and Sammy will be able to pull it up for, for uh, everyone on the call. Excellent. Great. Uh, so with that, uh, Emily Stockman, and I, I see you on the list. Are you available to discuss? Yes. Uh, thank you for that introduction, Pete. Can everyone hear me okay? Yeah, I gotcha. Great. Um, so I, I just like to start out by referencing um, the October 26 um, submittal um, by the applicant and Klein Felder, um, their representative. There was obviously a tremendous effort and a great deal of work and detail um, that went into um, that October revision. Um, Unfortunately, at the time of the hearing, however, though, we had just gotten those materials, um, so we didn't have an opportunity um, to delve into all the good hard work um, that the applicant had put forward. Um, subsequent to the hearing, um, I was able to um, delve into that October revision and provide the commission um, and the applicant with comments um, back on November 2nd. And um, my goal with those comments um, was not necessarily um, to rehash um, 
uh, comments that had been previously submitted with the original review, but to really hone in on um, areas where I had questions or comments or was looking for um, additional detail based on that um, October revision. And I also had included um, some screenshots um, in my comment letter um, to hopefully help communicate um, some, some items that seemed a little outstanding um, and to facilitate uh, moving this project forward. Um, I understand um, from uh, Danny's presentation that we have a new submittal. I have not received that. It looks like something's been prepared by Klein Folder dated November 9th. Um, so I have not received those. So I think it would be, if I may make a recommendation, um, nice to have that revised plan um, pulled up and maybe just go through Kleinfelder's response to my November 2nd letter utilizing that plan. Yeah, that would be great, Emily. That was the same plans that I wasn't able to pull up today either. And um, I didn't know if Amy had time to shift those off to you or not. It doesn't sound like so. I, I think if we go through the November 2nd correspondence from you with the new plans, um, maybe we have some answers. Great. Um, so would it help if I just led with some comments and then pause and gave uh, Danny and his team an opportunity to respond? Yeah, and, and, and I uh, marked up your letter, so I may jump in once in a while, too. Okay. <laughs> so, um, the, the first three comments um, on the November letter are simply acknowledging that the applicant um, has addressed on the site plans um, my comments reg regarding additional delineation, uh, the labeling of flags, um, and the and the fine tuning of some boundaries and and again also just an acknowledgement that you know this is based on a plan review that there's been no return site visit um, to look at anything in the field um, so I think that's fairly straightforward but I'll take a brief pause in case there's any questions on that. I uh, know I I agreed on that. Okay, so then I delved into the performance standards review, and one of my previous comments had just been um, to ask the applicant if they would um, uh, provide an updated exhibit A and subsequently B, really to quantify the loss of bank and land underwater attributed with the, the work being performed on streams S1 and S6. And um, if Danny could be so kind as to either scroll down to my screenshot or pull up your <laughs> revised plans. Um, I, I was looking at the mapping um, for the quantification of those resource areas and their lots. And I just had a, a primary question in regards to stream three as it approaches the new culvert it looked like that there was an area of the stream that was going to be lost, but had not been accounted for. Um, and so I was just asking uh, for that to be reviewed by the applicant. Yep, so we had a response to that. That was comment, let's see. I believe it's comment one on page two. Yep, down at the sort of the bottom of it there. So we responded that on to that on page five of our response letter. Um, essentially, that we agreed. We saw what you were referring to, um, and I'll, I'll just kind of uh, summarize our written response. Uh, the previous grading design created a small berm on the west side of the replacement reach of S one. Um, the design's been modified to remove that berm, which now will allow the existing contours to maintain connectivity uh, between the wetland and stream. And then we refer uh, everyone to sheet C-130, which shows the updated grading and connectivity. Um, so that's just a little bit of an update on the drawing, some contours. So that should hydrologically reestablish that connection. So that was a kind of a grading exercise.
Okay, thank you for that, Danny. Yeah, so there were the the comments were two part. It was whether or not there was going to be additional um, loss of land underwater and bank, but also a concern that there would be a loss of a connection between wetland three and its it you know its bordering stream. So sure. it looks. So like exhibit B and the WPA form three also have been updated to indicate. Yeah. The portion of S1 to the west of the LOD has an area of permanent loss due to uh, LEW and bank. And then for clarity, this is not anticipated to be disturbed under this project, but we recognize a stream replication replacement in, pro in close proximity will impact the functions and values of this small area and therefore have accounted been accounted for in the updated calculations. So the intent with the grading there, um, Danny, is that that berm has been um, reduced. So yeah, where you have like 182, it's gonna allow potentially some overflow in that area and maintain a connection. Um, it's with basically, yeah, it's it's just gonna create, um, allow water to continue to, to flow downhill and drain from the wet area or delineated wetland back into the stream as it has done or as is being done currently. So it's just going to allow all the conditions for a wetland to thrive and survive essentially and maintain that connection. So it's all, it's all at that 182 and we go 181, 180. Jump in okay. a little bit on this. This sure. is uh, Stephanie it. Hubbard here. Um, but we did take a, a really hard look at, at that wetland, um, that W3. And, you know, you'll see um, there's sort of a spot grade, a, a 181.4, which is is the existing spot grade uh, right there. Thank you, Sammy. Um, you know, fairly close in proximity. Um, you know, there's a, a 181.35 there. So what we're really trying to do is is limit any of that grading to, I'm going to say, to the west, um, going towards that that wetland three to maintain that connectivity um, between that wetland, what you see today. Now, what happens is it sort of goes into a little bit of a bowl and then it rises up. And if you, you sort of think about it in terms of, you've got two really small culverts that are sort of managing the flows from that area. So it, it does pond up a little bit, but you know, we, we've spent quite a bit of time as we identified and sort of reset what that invert both the invert of the pipe and then the invert of that stream embedment piece of it in that culvert going through. And so, you know, there's a little bit of grading in front of that culvert, that 180 um, that you see, but, but really we're tying that 180 back into the existing 180 closer to the wetland so that it's, it's really mimicking what's, what's happening between that, that stream flow, um, you know, in that wetland area as well. So we have focused quite a bit of time at looking at that grading and, and making sure that we're not significantly changing the flows, uh, but that we're also sort of making sure that that stream is, is being directed to that new culvert inlet that, that needs to be created. Thanks, Stephanie. So Emily, does that give yeah. you the sense that we're maintaining that connection then? Yeah, yeah, and I and I appreciate uh, Stephanie's summary of the area and the the hard look that the applicant and Kleinfelder took at that area. Um, does the commission have any questions in regards to that? Um, no, I had some. Uh... Some notes, but I think they've been addressed here. If that's the case, yeah. I think I'll continue on to the third page of the peer review notes. And I, I may, I may just group all of these together in the in the um, interest of time. So, in in essence, um, with the October submittal, um, uh, Kleinfelder and the applicant had done a, a great job. Um, acknowledging that the reroute of S6 and S1 was no longer going to be more of a, a con stormwater conveyance, but acknowledging that these would be realignments of streams. Um, and they did a great job back in October talking about how they would, you know, utilize uh, native uh, or natural substrate 
and um, would um, work to mimic existing conditions. Um, and that was in the narrative. But, but as I was reviewing the site plans, particularly looking at some of the, the typical um, channel sections that were provided and, and, and also looking at the plan view, um, I did have, uh, I think I would just say concerns about the level of detail that had been provided and being able to take this concept of a stream restoration from concept to directing a contractor to actually build these new replacement reaches. And um, so there were a number of, of questions there in regards to detail. And I think that rather than delve into them, um, I'd, I'd like to pause and give Danny an opportunity to present the new material because it looks like um, there have been uh, some changes to, to address those concerns. Oh, that'd be good because yeah. I, I have the similar question. So go ahead, Danny. Yeah, um, I mean, you kind of nailed a lot of it. Um, we have kind of a lengthy written response that was provided. I won't just read it on screen, but um, basically Sammy's got the meat and potatoes up on screen. We, we believe we understood what you were getting at um, and decided to make depictions of restoration sections for S1 and S6. And then we also, you know, in our written response to go into a little more detail about how we're going to reuse the natural substrate. Um, I'll just leave it at that. There is a, certainly a lot of detail that's been provided in that in that letter of how that's going to be done. Um, and a few notes as well here. So. OK. Excellent. Excellent. Um, yeah, I'm just looking in on those notes that are talking about the natural substrate and harvesting it. Um, very pleased to say, see that an engineer and a wetland scientist will be on site really to help with that review and mm. facilitate the appropriate implementation um, from a contractor by a contractor. Yeah, um, and that would be Emma and likely myself as the PE. So this is your staff here to, to be the wetland scientists and yourself. Okay. That's what we're proposing. Yes. Can you talk a little bit, Danny, about um, what you're proposing for WIFs for uh, S6 and S1 at this time and, and what those WIFs are based on? Um, and how stream stability will be maintained, you know, going from the um, unaltered streams and then heading into this new replacement reach and then heading into your new culvert. Steph, is that something you could answer? Sure, I'll, I'll jump in on this. Um, hi, everyone. So, you know, let's focus a little bit on um, S6. So you can sort of see the the delineation and, and I agree, um, Emily, that, you know, sort of the, the shaded areas that we, we depicted the last time didn't necessarily show you know, the exact conditions. But what we did is we took a look at both S1 and S6 at the streams and, and the widths of those. And if you sort of look um, on the, the viewport that, that Sammy's got up now, you can kind of see the, the delineation in blue, but you can really see this um, where that more defined channel is. Mm -hmm. And so we focused a little bit on that now that stream channel is probably, I think on S6, if I recall correctly, three to three and a half feet wide. You know, it's a fairly narrow, um, you know, channel. It was, it was really, you know, self-created at some point in time. And so what we've tried to do is to mimic sort of that width that we've seen as it, it runs down to. Now, the one thing I want to point out is when we start looking at the delineation as it gets closer to those two culverts that cross over, you got to keep in mind that those culverts are small. Um, and so when you talk about, you know, water getting down through into those, that there is some ponding there. So what we tried to do is, is more focus out to sort of the longer reaches of, of those streams. So you'll see in the cross section, you know, we've got this, this four foot wide section on S6, um, but we also keep in mind that you've got sort of this top of bank, you know, so as we reestablish that at a, a slope and sort of reconstruct with that native materials or the existing materials that we're pulling from the existing streams is that we're sort of creating that bank. And you'll see that somewhat with the grading that we've proposed um, with that. Now, S1 is a little bit wider. And again, mm -hmm. you know, we sort of looked at it 
from not where all of the streams sort of intermix and, and sort of pond a little bit prior to going through the existing culverts, but what that stream looked like, um, you know, further on and, and did sort of the same thing. You'll see that that has a bit of a wider bottom and that's depicted on that, that C-130. And, um, and then you'll also see where we're sort of creating, again, using some of those, those stabilized materials that we're pulling out, um, you know, just to start creating that bank and then reestablishing and restabilizing, you know, um, with, you know, loam. And then I think the, the vegetation piece that we've talked about using some of the more native, um, you know, uh, uh, seed types, you know, to, to help reestablish that and, and get it back, um, you know, to, to that more, you know, vegetated state outside of, of that stream. Now, I will point out there are a couple of areas where, you know, S Six currently sort of meanders um, and it's got a little bit of a slope at, at sort of the top of it. And so what we did is, is we do show the reuse of some, you know, if you look at some of the photos and you see the stream, there are some, some larger boulders that will come out from the areas that we're working on and to utilize those to capture some of those points at which um, we would expect to see some erosion or potential for that um, just because of how the stream flows and, and meanders. So. Um, you know, again, we've we've taken a, a fairly hard look, um, you know, at how this is going to recreate, how we're going to tie into the natural topography, um, and also keeping in mind that we don't want to continue to expand and, you know, disturb natural topography out there. Um, you know, we're, we're trying to, to keep this as naturalized working within the boundaries um, without, you know, doing a lot more clearing or having to clear to, to reconstruct some of these elements. Thank you for that, Stephanie. A, a follow-up question: um, As you were discussing, um, you know, the the establishment of the new bank and the grading, um, you talked about, you know, the, the application of loam and the use of, you know, establishing some some native vegetation there and some seeding. Uh, my recollection is that this is a project that's going to be um, worked on outside of the growing season. Um, so germination um, is not going to take place on those recently um, loamed areas. Are you anticipating that you may need to supplement the definition of the channels with a medium such as a, you know, a core log? Um, or are you planning to, to cover loamed areas with like a biodegradable erosion control um, blanket? A hundred yeah, yeah. So those areas, and and you'll see, um, we do identify the use of a temporary erosion control blanket above that channel areas. Um, so we do have some notes, I believe, there, in if yeah. I recall correctly, mm -hmm. five hundred two. Um, you know, so the intent is really that you know anything that's destabilized in an era in a time frame when there's no growing, um, you know, that we will utilize. Um, you know, those biodegradable type materials. And I, I think there was some discussion on that last time. Now, the other thing that, you know, I'll make mention is, you know, if you go back to that C-130 plan, you know, what we're, again, trying not to do is to overgrade out there. So we're trying to utilize some of the natural slopes. We recognize we're going to have to tie into things as, as we go in. But, you know, we really spend a little bit of time, um, you know, trying not to, to disturb, particularly on that sort of eastern side as, as we're looking at this plans or or to the right hand side you know to try and limit how much disturbance were happening over there um, you know for that that purpose solely um, and the other thing I'll highlight in in this was sort of part of that that page of comments that you had was sort of the length of the culvert and um, one thing that you'll see that we've done on this plan is we've actually showed the side slope grading and so, okay. um, and we've pointed everybody to that profile that, that Sammy just pulled up because I think it's important, you know, you see this road today and then you see actually what that road needs to be. Um, and we've also highlighted and identified, you know, the, the requirements of that road are really dictated by MSHA, which is the Mine Safety Health Administration. Um, and so, you know, we had to look at it from the full length of road. So, you know, there's, there's grade changes, there's, you know, slopes, um, there's a whole bunch of, just sort of protective safety components as that hall road is, is getting designed. So, you know, I just wanted to capture that comment because it was one that you had brought up was, 
um, was, you know, does that culvert need to be the length that we're talking about? And so what we did is, is into that C-130, we sp sort of took a, a, a look and showed where that grading is going to come to. And we used, you know, a side slope that was, you know, basically we're at minimum so that we're not impacting to the extent we can. But hopefully that that sort of helps to, to visually depict um, sort of the limits and the lengths of that culvert as required. And if you go to the letter that we just submitted again, you know, Danny, I think said this at the start, um, we tried to spend a little bit of time to get to the point where we could tell you guys the story of why, you know, why, why those components are happening, particularly in that section of new roadway. Thank you, Stephanie. And I, I do appreciate that. During the October hearing, you know, it was a it was a lot of information and 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 Danny had conveyed that this was an MSHA requirement, but I was just looking for a little more meat and potatoes. Um, and it sounds like that got served up this evening. So I appreciate you delving into that um with more detail. Um yeah. it's just, you know, there's a good chunk of uh open stream channel down gradient um today. Um, and that will be lost by the proposed culvert. Um, but I, 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 I'm not second guessing MSHA requirements, mm -hmm. yeah. uh, but I do appreciate um, Danny and your team taking another look at that. Yeah, and I will also highlight, we did, um, uh, you know, one of the things that we talk about in there is, you know, once it, these roads have a much higher wheel loading um, than what a typical road would be designed at. So this has a 40,000 pound wheel load. And if you have a typical roadway, you're looking at 16,000 pounds. So, you know, again, as we talk about making this culvert, you know, if it had to get bigger, you're talking about getting into a bridge and that becomes a very um, hard thing to sort of overcome, you know, when you've got a bridge um, with the wheel loadings that we're talking about, you know, you're talking about, you know, significant reinforcement of culverts, you're talking about, um, you know, significant upgrades, monitoring, maintenance, and things like that. Um, but so to that point, we, we tried to put some of those details in there to recognize that this is not just a standard road where we're driving, you know, our, our pickup trucks over. There's a lot more detail and design requirements that have to happen to make it safe for the vehicles that are being moved. That being said, though, we have increased a bit the size of this culvert to give us as much space as we can without getting to the point where we feel like it's something that we can't overcome um, that doesn't become cost effective at the end of the day. Pete, before I continue on, does the commission have any questions about the, you know, the revised um, S1 and S6? uh stream reach design no your discussion it, um back and forth here has has answered a lot of what i had jotted down from my notes so i think we're having that connection um there was a cross section of the culvert i i think Do, what's the depth of the embedded portion of the uh substrate it's two feet two feet, two feet? okay Okay. Um, no, there's a couple other things that, but you guys seem to be covering a lot of the stuff that I have my pink highlighter on here so far. So I'll let you keep going. Um, while we're on the pipe embedment cross section, the the calculations I, I seem to recall in the October um, response. Um, there was a lot of detail on the mm. capacity of the culvert um, regarding um, the various storm events. Did those calculations include the loss of volume associated with the embedment? Yeah, so we've got updated calculations um, that do include absolutely that. Um, and, you know, we looked at it from the, I think it was the 210 and then the 100 year storm event as well yeah. to make sure that we're, we're not overtopping. Okay. Um, so, yep, we do have those calculations. And, and the purpose of the in, embedment is just to more securely um, install that culvert um, as it in regards to its relationship with the upstream and downstream channel not to be altered? Yeah, yeah. Okay, so just just a point of discussion quick for the Conservation Commission, because I think commissions are typically 
um, familiar with culverts being embedded to meet the stream crossing standards. But in that case, um, the, the goal is to oversize a culvert and then um, embed it and, and recreate a stream channel inside of this. Um, and with the case of this project, um, as Stephanie had, had discussed earlier, um, the culvert is not oversized based on bankful width um, as the applicant has presented um, due, to, due to constraints of the site and um, the requirements for the hall road. So I just want, that's just a sort of a point for the commission um, that this is not, you know, a, a wildlife habitat aspect um, that you would typically see with a fully complying stream crossing standard. Yeah, no, I appreciate that. I think we uh, I did discuss that last in the last meeting as well. Um, in some of those calculations, I was looking for that. Um, but no, I appreciate that uh, reminder. Thank you. And then just continuing down again for the interest of time, um, the the bordering vegetated wetland connectivity has been discussed. Um, in regards to riverfront, on um, this is on page not, uh, page four, item ten. Uh, just reminding that the commission that um, the work within riverfront area, the applicant has presented it as a limited project status. And so um, if you agree with that presentation, um, that should be part of your vote um, when you're getting into issuance phase um, with a finding that you are citing it as a limited project under 1053-3E. And then the commission should be aware um, that you can impose um, conditions prohibiting further activities um, within the riverfront if, you know, in perpetuity, um, should you feel that that was fit for this site. Um, so sort of just a housekeeping item there procedurally. Uh, I, think we touched, <laughs> I think we touched on item 11 sort of in discussion during the last public hearing. Um, the commission had had some questions about um, the temporarily impacted riverfront being able uh, or allowed to revegetate. And my recollection was the applicant had discussed a little bit about seeding. So I was just looking for some more detail on the type of seeding. And um, also along that same vein, um, the control of invasive species within those temporarily impacted areas to naturally revegetate. Danny, did you guys have an opportunity? Yeah, we, we responded in our letter um, that we just use the application of native seed mix um, and measures to control the introduction and spread of invasive plant species as described in the Massachusetts erosion and sediment control guidelines for urban and suburban areas. So we'll just we'll be following those guidelines. Mm -hmm. And then on your previous comment on the 310 CMR 53-3E, uh, we have no exception um, to that, um, uh, to a specific order of conditions prohibiting further activities, but just would like to state for the commission that, um, you know, the project Hall Road, we're designing it to limit the potential for future site modifications and impacts. We definitely don't want to be touching this again, <laughs> but are just concerned that that precedent, if it were set, would... Um, you know, would would prohibit us if some emergency condition or unknown, um, you know, function were to occur that we would need to remediate, you know, that would be prohibitive to that. And obviously we would be uh, coming in front of the board, you know, should anything need to be um, further permitted for this down the road. But I mean, by no means are we designing this to ever want to touch it again. I just don't understand, you know, what's to gain from from, from ordering, um, you know, based on the limited project status that essentially we can't ever apply for limited project status again in this area. I just mm -hmm. want to make that statement, so. And yeah. like, could that possibly do, be nuance of the prohibit uh, further activities under CMR blah, blah, blah. 
<laughs> without um you know further uh input from the commission something of that nature yeah so Maybe that caveat a bit yeah, so basically, I just provided the commission with the language mm -hmm. and the regulations so that you could be aware of it. Yeah. Um, it it very clearly says that the issuing authority may continue a condition. It doesn't say that you have to. Um, okay. I can give you an example of a, a, a process that I was aware of where it, um, that uh, commission under... Um, limited project status allowed the installation of a driveway through riverfront area, um, but they they determined that they would have an ongoing condition that there could be no other driveways or access ways. Um, based on um, what the applicant has just presented to the commission, um, I don't know that that exactly um, fits for this site because I don't think that there's any intent. Um, and as as Danny mentioned, you know, this will remain a perennial stream. This will remain protected riverfront. If the applicant were to decide to embark on other activity in this area, um, they would have to go before the Conservation Commission if they were in resource area and weren't exempt. Um, so, yeah. okay. again, the language says that you may. Uh, it doesn't say that you have to. Um, right. There were any specific concerns that the commission had about the project, um, and so they wanted to pro prohibit certain activities. Um, you you have the authority to consider that. Okay, a little, little legally there for sure. Yeah. Okay, that's good, um, Danny. What, and I didn't have a chance to look at your resubmittal from yesterday. So you said, uh, did you define what the nat native seed mix was? Is that what you said? We defined what that we would follow. Uh, let's see, we would be following the Massachusetts, basically the Massachusetts regs. Do you have? Okay. Uh, let's see, I can see that. I just lost my place. Amy, I may have to grab a hard copy of this tomorrow. I'm having trouble picking it out. Yeah, the Massachusetts erosion and sediment control guidelines for urban and suburban areas. Okay. Um, it's on page eight, Sammy. Yeah. Eight. You okay. I believe that would be appropriate, but okay, good. So it's defined there. Thank you. Um, Emily, go ahead. Um, under additional comments, um, I just had some recommendations for some potential conditions um, as it relates to the stream bass bypass and the culvert installation. Um, these may be a, a little redundant. I understand that the commission has a set of standard special conditions um, that you will go through likely <laughs> yeah. um, and highlight the ones that apply to the project. So this intent was just to sort of uh, bring your attention um, to the delicacy of that. Um, sure. And we did include a note on sheet C110 that addresses the stream flow bypass. And I mean, I'm at this site three to four days a week. And it, I can just tell you from anecdotal experience, it is uncommon that there's even flow through these culverts. It's typically during snow melt and then the odd and end, you know, heavy rain through the summer and fall but it's not consistently running. And we've talked internally about how we would stage construction for this. And we do plan to essentially get the crane, get everything ready to go so that this culvert is dropped in place, you know, basically within a one work day. I, I I'm not gonna commit to that, but it's okay. essentially within the magnitude of, of one work day. It could be a half a day. I think at most it'd be maybe two. I, I highly doubt it. So, I mean, it's, we will certainly be looking for fully dry conditions and they will not be extremely difficult to yeah. find. I mean, we just wait a week or something like that to do the culvert. We have plenty of other things in this project, as yeah, you know, so with some of the stormwater we can work on. So, but we do have it covered. And should we run into a situation where bypass is needed, 
I think we've got it adequately covered at this point. Okay. So you're okay with the forecast and rain within 48 hours? I Absolutely. Think our yeah, general condition may say, yeah. you know, up to a half an inch or something, but I mean, it's within the same area and in the flow rate at 30, 34 uh, CFS, is that still within your calculations? I'll have to defer to Stephanie for that. Okay. It is, yeah. And you'll see um, okay. it's on. Uh, da, 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 da. Oh, there it is. Comment all right, number yeah. seven. Okay. Yep. Yep. Okay. So. so that this all been addressed. So I'm asking questions where things have already been addressed. Um, on site compliance monitor, Emily, what did you, what was your thinking there? Yeah, I think, um, and again, that could be a combination of, um, you know, a project engineer or in some instances, um, you know, a wetland scientist who's there to, to monitor um, other aspects of, of the project, um, such as the, the stream replacement. Yeah. Um, they can double as a compliance monitor. Um, it's just, uh, you know, someone, someone who's overseeing the installation of that bypass and making sure that it's implemented um, appropriately. Yeah, and Dan, if you're going to do this in a day or two, um, I think the wetland specialist is going to be around anyway, so that should be doable, I would think. I think so, yeah. Yeah. And it's, again, it's my understanding that the Deerfield Conservation Commission has a, has a set of standard special conditions, um, which probably reference a compliance monitor for other activities. So the intent was that it would just be the same staff you know, the same person or persons or designee. Yeah. Um, it doesn't need to be someone individual specifically for the bypass. It's whomever's already been um, yeah. nominated and approved by the commission for the site. Yeah. I'm not sure if it's in our, our boilerplate right here, but I know we put some wording in that for some other plans that are similar. Um, okay. And then um, just real quick, yeah, you had your test. Oh, go yeah. ahead. And I, if we're just, if you want to continue on, I just um, I give Danny an opportunity to address it. It was the LOD line um, on the south. Yeah, we cut it. We we removed that part from the project okay. entirely. Okay. 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 Removed. Okay. And a question mark on that too. Thank you. Go ahead, Emily. Do you do not need to do any work there. <laughs> No, and uh, we can just we can do it as a later date. I contacted uh, the our the EPA Boston office, and they concluded that over the phone that would be part of the NIPTI stormwater permit that's existing, since that work is tied to the pond, uh, the existing pond there that will still be in use and is uh, very clearly hydrologically connected to um, outfall will we'll be a new outfall that we're building. So we'll, we'll just hold off. It's not needed. It was kind of a nice to have since we were in the area. And since I, you know, we hired Kleinfelder to do the work, we assumed, hey, might as well, but we can hold off. There's no actual issue there right now. So we'll just wait on that. Understood. Um, I, I, again, it, it's not that there was a concern with the work. It was just that it was defined as an LOD area on the overall sheet, but then we didn't have a specific sheet um, detailing it. Um, but if you're comfortable as the applicant for tackling it another day, um, I understand that. Okay. You just removed yeah. It. yeah. Um, and then there was just a question about some erosion controls. Um, and I tried to provide some screenshots. Um, the, the original NOI had shown quite an expansive silt fence. It almost followed the LOD um, for, for quite uh, some stretches. Um, but then with the revisions, um, I noticed that there were some areas that appeared to be lacking, which I think I think it's compost tubes that you've switched to in, in sections. Um, yeah, so we want to show so that area is actually the road is pitched it's not a, a traditionally crowned road um it's actually canted so it that's the, the high point that's the top of the hill mm -hmm. so we didn't think it would be necessary to put erosion controls at the top of a slope um 
just for the sake of you know depicting it or encircling the LOD, uh, since the water, any runoff will be directed downslope to the um, to the BMPs that we are installing. Um, if you, go ahead. And there, is there no tie-in further down the hall road and upgrading it? That um, no, sorry, other direction. Um, I remember there was an intersection out there. So are there no concerns with shedding no, in this area? I believe we've got some that were introduced in this, in this oh. area, yes. Okay. And where you don't have the LOD demarcated um, by erosion controls, how will you designate it in the field for your contractors? Will you be staking it? Will it have some flags? Um, I mean, we could, that's probably the most practical way to do it, or we just lay out the silt fence starting from the east and work our way west and just stop where it coincides, you know, with station 16 plus two five, or, you know, if you lay out your station and pull your offsets, just lay out the silt fence, right? And where the silt fence ends should be where it ends. You know, I mean, I, I'll be out there. I'll just reference the plan and have them keep staking till they don't have to so because the that sill fence is going to require staking as well i mean it's part of the, the control so were there any other areas where in this revision where um the erosion control compost tombs are depicted where they weren't previously Sammy, I'll let you uh, handle that question. I think it's just, it looks to me like it was just at the, the wetland W1. So I guess no. Can't hear you, Sammy. So I, I can jump in on this one too. Um, you know, there's a couple of areas where we just don't need it because, you know, either the road is a bit lower than the surrounding soils. Um, but we did take a, you know, another look in some of the more critical areas, you know, particularly as we went past wetlands and streams, um, you know, to make sure that, that those things were depicted, um, you know, within those resources that are, are very, you know, we want to protect, right? Um, so. I think we're pretty good based on my review. Pete, were there any questions or comments from the Conservation Commission? Um, I just had one more real quick because I didn't, I wasn't able to open up this final, but all your test pits that were done this past week, did they confirm? What yeah. your... So we've got a lengthy discussion on page two of our response regarding the test pits and also included the test pit reports. And long story short, we believe our design is confirmed to be viable um, based on what we had found from the test pit evaluation. Okay. No changes there. Um, yeah, I'll, I'll throw it. I know it's been a lengthy discussion. So um, thank you, Emily and Dan and everybody else. Very helpful to me. It answered a lot of my pink highlights here. Um, anything from any of the other commissioners? I don't see everybody's face at this point. So I really appreciate the, the time and thought that Danny and his whole team and Emily have put to, have put into this project. Um, it's really a big one, the first one for me. So uh, I thought it was really well put together, and I thought that the I thought that the peer review worked out really well in the circumstance. Um, I only had one question, and it was: Have we not? Have we nailed down 
if any additional substrate material is bringing in, are you only using the natural material to recondition that stream bed? Are you not? <clears throat> and I ask only, you know, are we concerned about like loss? Uh, now I realize you're looking at doing this during dry. So that's, I mean, if that's the case, then I would imagine you'd have no material loss and the natural substrate would work. But I didn't know if we had nailed down um, any additional materials that are going to be on site for use at the time or um, if it was just natural. Yeah, Sammy, do you want to bring up the, the detail that shows? I think we have a note that states that I don't want to misquote it. But I think it's essentially that if we don't have a uh, natural substrate here we go. So we'll be basically trying to, if we don't have enough material that's currently there to put back to what we're proposing, we're essentially going to mimic that condition um, through essentially like a cake mix, right? Just mixing up a similar gradation of materials. And guess what? They will be low, they will be coming from about 500 feet west of this stream. So they're not going to be like hauled in from New Hampshire or something like that. They're gonna be quarry the existing materials, the same bedrock, the same, it's just gonna be screened and processed through our crushing and sorting operation right next door. So we'll be able to whip up a similar mix. And um, you know, if needed, we'll be able to, to add that into any areas where, you know, if we don't have enough removed, you know, we'll create our own. So okay. Does that help, Thank Sean? You. That answered my question. Yeah, anything from Kate or Ben? Nope. Anybody else in attendance? Any comments? And Emily, do you want to wrap up anything? I think, I don't know, because I wasn't able to look at all the plans, but have we got a signed and stamped NOI? Was that part of the last submittal, yesterday submittal, or no? And the same with the stormwater report? Checklist. Sammy, was Joe able to sign and stamp it? If not, Peter, we can certainly provide that ASAP as you know condition. Yeah. Okay. Because we'll we'll need to have that in place to review one, the official one in, and then we can do an order of conditions and, and we so can forth. reissue. Yeah, all materials that require sign and stamp that were issued uh, Wednesday yesterday, we can. Uh, reissue those materials, remove the revision clouds from the drawing so to make them clean and yeah. uh, add the stamp and signature. I, it's, yep, no problem okay. on that. Uh, Emily uh, Stockman, anything else from your perspective? Uh, no, that was my last, uh, that was going to be my last question, Pete, and you beat me to it. So that's okay. great. The commission will need to have those signed and stamped to issue the order. So I, I I don't want to put words in the commissions, any of the other ones that can all have their, their say, but it seems like we've made a lot of progress We're in a pretty good spot. Um, we do need the final um, plan set in. Um, we'll have to work out some order conditions that we probably want to review. I might suggest <laughs> that even though this is looking good, we continue it to our next week's meeting on the 17th. If you get us all the final plans, everything stamped, signed, sealed, and delivered, um we'll have time to look at some conditions that we can review either beforehand or during that call and then uh maybe we can uh wrap this one up next week at, at that point uh, commissioners any other thoughts i think that makes sense pete danny sam uh work for for you all I think that's reasonable. Unfortunately, I may not be able to make that meeting, but I think I, you know, Sammy or Stephanie could be a delegate okay. on my behalf. So. And I'll work with Amy early in the week and try to get a, a draft for people to review of what the conditions are so you can review it beforehand and have any comments. They're really just kind of our standard boilerplate. Hopefully within the next month or two, uh, they'll be posted on our website anyway. So um, okay. that would make it a slam dunk. Yeah. I think if that can were- Can you hear me now? Can you hear oh yeah, that? hi Sammy. Yeah. <laughs> this stupid headset. Anyway, um, we'll get you a full package, um, paper copies, everything over. Um, I'll get with 
um, Joe, Danny, and we'll we'll get that hand delivered. Okay. So. And then, great, we'll take a look at that. And Emily, mm -hmm. if you if we'll get that material to you, uh, if you could do another review, I think we have a few more uh, hours of your time available. Um, and then we'll see if we uh, need to suggest any further meetings on site or not. But I think if we can do that, so I might suggest we just do a, a continuation of this hearing till our next meeting, which is next Thursday. We seem to be doing this about once a week these days. Um, so, Peter, do you think the board would or the commission would be in a position to just approve or deny the project at the next meeting? Are we at that point yet? Uh, yeah, depending on what the plans look like, I would have Emily take another close look at the plans and the details. Uh, but I think we're, Danny, I think we're uh, we're getting close to a decision point, uh, and hopefully next week, when we can review all the other materials, Does that help. It does. So are we expecting another round of comments then from Stockman Associates? Is that what you're getting at? Um, I, I won't speak for Emily, but uh, only if your uh, your other uh, comments and the designs are, to, are are way different than what we've talked about tonight. <laughs> no, yeah, I think so, discussed tonight, it will, th yeah. there will be no changes made. Yeah. Emily, you agree? Um, yeah, based on um, the presentation um, by Danny and and his associates this evening, um, it seems that that my my questions for my November second um, peer review have been answered um, in detailed. Um, the I would just leave that I haven't I haven't looked at the plans, Danny. I, unfortunately, I didn't get that email yesterday. I guess when they went out, um, but it seems like everything's been covered. And more likely than not, my focus will be on the the special conditions of the permit. Okay, I think we're I think we're making progress. Only been X number of months, right? I think seven, if anyone's counting. But <laughs> we won't know what to do with you guys if you're not on our agenda. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I think we're we're good. So um, I could take a motion from the commissioners to uh, for a continuation. Uh, Sean Libby, a uh, motion to continue the hearing on the NOI filed by uh, Daniel Hartman for map 21 lot one to the next regularly scheduled con conservation commission meeting. Um, can you hold the left? 1127. Is that it? 1117. 1117. Revised to 1117. Okay. We can work with that. Do we have a second? Kate Devon, I'll second that. Okay. Any other comments from the commissioners? The motion on the table is to continue the public hearing for the All States Materials Group to next week, the 11 17 at 7 p.m. Um, take a roll call vote to accept. Uh, Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Pete Law, aye. So we have okay. one more well, week. We, we do end. appreciate yeah. you guys uh, all meeting uh, for the special meeting. That is very much appreciated. So yeah, it's a special yeah. meeting night. Glad to have you join. All right. See you in a Thank week. You. Yep. Um, yeah, before uh, uh, Emily, before you go, I just want to let you know, you guys, um, when I send that stuff out, I always uh, post it to the website. And Emily, I, I apologize. I, I didn't copy you on this. I should have. But um, if you're having trouble looking at the plans, I post them to uh, the town website, to the Conservation Commission page, and you should be able to open those up. Um, so that's just for, you know. For reference, and uh, I can certainly go in tomorrow and, and make sure to send things out if that's necessary. Yeah, Amy, I haven't been able to locate the November eighth materials on the Allstate file for our ConCom section on this day. I've been looking because okay. I, I I didn't get this the materials from the eighth either. So oh okay um, okay I I don't. Yeah. I've been trying to call them up just so that I could follow along. I don't see them, and I'm, maybe I'm just not reading them. Um, yeah, well, you Amy, know what, I, Amy, if I you want to just forward the link that the email that Sammy had sent out to to the town, there, yeah. there some of the files are very large. I wouldn't be surprised if they may have trouble loading onto the server that the town may use. 
Um, but they, if you click Sammy and Kleinfelder, organize them so you can just click on each one and download it directly to your computer. I think under these circumstances, until maybe we could figure out how to get it on the town server, at least get it to the board members and um, to Emily as well, just in the interest of time. Yeah, yeah, I did. Um, I did send. I'll send it out again. I, I did forward that email. Okay. Unfortunately, not to Emily, but I'll if, do that. And I, if yeah. any of the board members have trouble at that point, you can feel free re to reach out directly to me, and I can work with Sammy to see if there's any issue on the the file service that they use. But I, I found it worked for me. So just yeah. Let me know. Okay. I did have some issues today too, so we'll okay. we'll follow up. I will we'll let us it. know. We'll help you okay. out if if you're having uh, administrative kind of problems getting the files. Okay, great, appreciate it. All right, we'll talk next week. Okay, thank you. Thank you. All right, continue on this evening. Uh, continuation of the public hearing. Continuation for abbreviated notice of resource delineation wetlands del deline delineation filed by. Kenneth Polkland, Sunny Days, Inc., and Rad asked the Conservation Commission to accept revised the wetland delineations shown on the submitted plan. The property is located off Greenfield Road, map 159, lot 14. Um, sorry to be so late, everybody that's hanging in there. I see Ken Polkland on the line. Um, Kate Bednes um, is on the line, Fred King. I think that's all the representatives, right? And we still have the commissioners. So um, the applicant want to bring us up to date with any changes there, or do we just want to uh, jump into uh, comments from uh, Kate's peer review? Yeah, I think we're just waiting to uh, see the peer review and, and hear the comments. Okay. Well, Kate. Uh, do you want to walk us through what you what you found what your thoughts are i have we all have your letter from november 7th um I have a few areas are highlighted but i will let you go through it and hopefully answer all my questions sure good evening everybody uh just to confirm so has the applicant received the peer review letter no i'm sorry about that um fred didn't get it either and fred fred's on here he's the um he's the one who did the wetland delineation yeah um hmm. our apologies i thought that was out to everybody yeah is I, there... I apologize that is that is my fault i am not um that, this is a good uh thing for me to remember that when i get these things i have to forward to the applicants as well as the um as well as the commission i i will remember that going forward so um, what I, you know, it's pretty straightforward and um, what I could do right now, um, or maybe we have another way to do it is to email this over to Fred and Ken so that they can see what we're reviewing. Is that a, an option at this moment or I can do that myself? I just pulled it up on the screen. Um, Amy, are you able to email it as well? I can show the screen if that Yeah, helps. I'll just share the screen and I think it's, you know, it's appropriate. That, that'll be fine. I was wondering why I hadn't heard from you, Fred. <laughs> I think I think Fred texted me before. I think he's having a problem with his mic. Okay. So. Um, so. Uh, okay, you're okay with showing this, right? There's a, there's just a, this is a just yep. your report. So yeah, we're good. Yep. Let me. Uh, Perfect. Thank you. Everybody can see it. Okay. Yes. All right, so it's to the Conservation Commission from November 7th. Um, just one quick question, uh, Kate, before you start. So this is at 7.25 acres. Uh, the whole site, I believe, is 28.6 acres. So we only did a peer review on the locations that were delineated on the ANRAD itself, right? So there's still some open areas there that have not been completed. Correct. I'm actually looking right now, um, and I took the reference off the plans for the map and lot that was referenced on the ANRAD, and that may not be accurate when I'm looking at the plans right now. Um, um, I'm looking at the actual uh, form yeah, the, the, 4A. The portion um, that's down to the east 
Uh, yeah, so we have the, the larger portion of the property, which is that 17 acres. And then there's a, that portion that's located to the east, which is along Greenfield Road, Route 5 and 10. So uh, the whole site was reviewed. Um, those two sites there, everything that's been delineated and shown on the project plans was reviewed. Okay. And the, it, it was, they did a great job. Um, you know, overall, there really was very few adjustments. Um, and they were very minor in nature. Um, I know that the DEP wetland data forms was something that I had noticed when it came to um, Eastern Hemlock being identified mm -hmm. as a wetland species and those have been corrected. Uh, and I took a look at the corrected data forms and those look acceptable. That was comment number one. Um, comment number two. Um, so there's a couple locations where the delineation does not extend to the property line. So if we are looking on the north side of the property is where most of these areas are. So the comment on this is uh, if the applicant wishes to extend those, I don't think they're going to change uh, really the buffer zones. But, um, you know, there are some areas that are not completely delineated. This also includes intermittent streams that are located within the wetlands that they've identified in there and rad that they have not been delineated. So um, if it is the case where those boundaries don't get extended to the property line, um, I would just recommend that the commission clearly state that the limits of the review are uh, dictated by these project plans specifically and that not all wetland uh, resource areas have been delineated as part of this ANRAD review. Okay. Um, uh, Fred or Ken, do you have any yeah. other thoughts on that? Yeah, so that, that's fine with us. Um, we stopped um, delineate, delineating the wetlands um, because we're, we're, we're not going into that area ever. Um, that, that goes on to the, you know, the, I guess it would be the northern part of the property. And then of this lot, 17.25 acre lot, and it goes on to the rest of the property, which at no point in time are we planning on using that part of the property that's going to be preserved woodlands. Okay, so just note that we would specify that the document only cover the areas delineated. So if you do change your mind down the road and it's not woodlands and we're, we come back and start over on that point, right? Correct. Okay. Does that, work, uh, does that work, Kate? Yep, and the other option too is if you you know you're filing a notice of intent and you want to expand the delineation, you can go ahead and mm -hmm. um, have it as part of that process too. Yep. Okay. Um, now, the probably the biggest comment that I have uh, is what is located on the opposite side of Route Five and Ten. So um, that area over there, when you're yeah, I had talked to um, I had talked to. Um, uh, Fred about this and because of the fact that the 100 foot buffer extends um, into the middle of and over the highway in most locations that they weren't too concerned about what was across the street in terms of uh, depicting that and showing that because there are wetlands and there is a water course from visual observations uh, but when I look at the plans there is a little area that is on the northeast corner um, where the buffer zone does not extend into the roadway and it does be contained on the site. So if there are wetlands across the street, that 100 foot buffer zone may extend onto the property in that location and actually include that in the buffer zone. But I think more importantly is the, water, uh, the stream, the water course that's across the street and uh, determining its nature, which it appears um, from visual observations and from the report and the connection to that water course that that would be a perennial water course and with that perennial water course that 200 feet would then extend in a couple of areas onto the subject property so um, my recommendation is to identify these areas and if you can't get access to identify these areas to estimate them from aerial uh, photography and on-site observations um, you know so they can get the extent of the review areas onto the plan. Yeah, so is that, um, that is a perennial stream across the, to the, air, the road. Um, so that wouldn't have the 200 foot buffer coming off the, 
meeting high water level there. Um, so is that just then, Kate, for, you know, completing, um, completing the review, completing the, the survey on that? Um, or what's the ramifications for that with the uh, jurisdictional area coming off of that from the uh, other stream? So, um, you know, there, like I said, there may be some BBW 100 foot buffer that goes onto the property. Yeah. But, um, you know, that 200 feet would likely extend onto a good portion of the property, if not all of it. And so then when you're looking to gain access onto this property from the roadway, you'd be having to intersect riverfront area and you'd be subject mm -hmm. to those regulations. So um, it, it's my opinion that it's important to get these identified and shown um, you know, the detail of identification, I'm not sure um, how concerned I am with that because the riverfront area, that stream is pretty visual from aerial photographs. Yeah. If you have a way to interpolate, interpolate that, I think we can get a pretty good approximation. And the wetland boundary, um, just from going out there and standing on the edge of the road, you should be able to get a pretty reasonable um, sense of where that line is. And I think notification notes on the plan can then state how those areas were delineated. Um, if you can get on there to actually hang the flags, that'd be great. But, um, you know, I'm not, not sure how easy that's going to be. Yeah, I, I don't believe we'll be able to get on there very soon because that's not our property and we'll have to go through the process of asking permission. The other thing I don't understand is, I mean, that literally on the other side of the highway, um, I don't see it affecting our entrance to our property, which would be the only the only portion of that 200 foot buffer that we would be, um, you know, encroaching on and, and passing through. So, I mean, this is really going to hold us up again, Pete. I mean, I, you know, this, this, this is going to be tough to try to get this taken care of in a timely fashion. Yeah, I think. Um, it's a cross, I don't know it's to have the highway, you know, it's, it's yeah, all the way, there's a highway between us and, and whatever's on that other guy's property. Yeah, I think Fred, though, if he looks at the, you know, the, the mass GIS or various maps will be able to get a pretty quick indication of where that is located and, and pop it into your plans. It's a pretty prominent stream coming down through there. And you'll see it as you go up five and 10, you'll see it as you look over to that property and it, it does extend out. It, it moves eastwardly a little bit as you go down through, um, but, so as we come in, I'm trying to remember, Kate, if the river front then extends over that 200, do you have any in the top of your head what those regulations would kick in relative to access roads? Mm, I have to pull up the regulations specifically, um, but yeah. you know, there's thresholds for disturbance to the riverfront area. Yeah, and uh, I think it's um, only a certain number of square footage or something. Correct. So. You know, I, I don't think it's the most cumbersome task. I think Fred and our discussions has had some experience with providing um, an approximation of a delineation, you know, utilizing aerial photographs and things of that nature. So in terms of it taking too much time, um, you know, I don't know if it is as timely as you're thinking, Ken, uh, because of the fact that we can use things in the office and um, Big Brother with Google Earth and all that great stuff to extrapolate this information. And the riverfront area is, you know, as, as we all know, is, is one of the more cumbersome uh, sections of the Wetlands Protection Act to work with. And it's really important that we know the extent of riverfront area that extends onto the property. And that's why even being across the street um, does make a difference when it comes to this. And I know the Deerfield Commission has done this with other projects as well. So, um, you know, it, it would be. Uh, yeah. It, it, it definitely, so, so, it's, as I read this, it popped up that we, we couldn't, we're going to need that, Ken. We're going to need to find out where the numbers are and look at it. Um, Kate, is there any culvert connection? Correct, yes. There is. So that's, it becomes a, um, what do they call it, jurisdictional connection? Yep. Yep. Okay, so, so there's culvert. So to be clear, are you just looking for a delineation for the 100 foot and the 200 foot buffer? Is that what you're looking for? You need that line that goes 100 and 200 feet all the way along on my property. So we'll need to see some approximation on the plans. Um, 
offsite, you know, you can you can have them gray lined, little show approximate location of um, bank associated with perennial stream, and then you'll have an approximate, um, and, you, and you can decide with the wetland what makes a difference and what doesn't. You know, if you have an overlapping 100 foot buffer, then, you know, you can just have, have it be a little bit less um, tight, but obviously the more tight you can have it, and then that'll show us a 100 foot buffer that extends from that side onto the property. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. Does this sound reasonable to you, Fred? I, I, I don't okay. think Fred can talk. He's having a problem with his microphone. You know what I wonder? I, I see, Fred, that you have two things open. What if we were to unmute your other one? Oh, yeah, Fred's got two. I don't know if anybody. You're open, oh, yeah. you're open to twice, Fred. Yeah. yeah. Is, is, can we hear him? The second one you just unmuted. Fred, can you say something? Can you hear me? Yeah, we got gotcha. you. You can hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, we can. I'm, I'm watching it on my computer, but it, the, the audio is coming through my phone. <laughs> <laughs> okay. I've never, <laughs> it's crazy because my computer, for some reason, the mic is gone. So, well, it's working. Uh, excellent. Excellent. So what do you take, Fred, on it? Uh, you know, approximating where we're at. We do have a perennial stream across the uh, Route Five there, which it's connected by culvert, apparently. Yeah, um, that's uh, that. It's that big culvert that's on the south end of the site um, that goes across the road. That's that is the stream that that goes up on the other side. Mm -hmm. um, so the as um, as she was saying, the the uh, the aerial photo photography on that site on that area is pretty good, uh, as far as being uh, and and the the banks of that stream are very pretty distinct in the aerial. So we could probably get that onto the plan fairly quickly, um, and we could pro approximate the uh, the BVW from uh, by observation from the edge of the road. I guess because I think it's pretty much right at the bottom of the slope on the other side, um, except when you get way down past where I, where the entrance is going to be. At that point, there's no there's no not going to be any work. Uh, you know, I think the the entrance way might be just into it, into that 200 feet. But then as you go down the road, that but that is the only uh, place that that would have work within 200 feet. All right, so we we're going to have to know that. Uh, Fred, so if we can approximate that, I think you can. I think the the the, the photographs are probably we can get it on a map. We'll see where the two hundred is, see where the overlaps are there, and where the uh, where the work would be. Yeah, yeah. Um, uh, as far as uh, uh, yeah, I think we can get a pretty good ex uh, approximation on the uh, on the vegetated wetland too. It's over there. Okay. That borders it. Uh, like I said, it would probably just walk, walking up the street. If we don't have permission, if we have permission, I could throw some flags out, but uh, and then approximate it because I can. At the edge of the road is very clear, and I can get distances in uh, from yeah. off the road. I, I've got too many screens open. I can't pull up the the mapping of town, but the north side of that is a big chunk that's um, Treehouse Brewery, and then the town must own somewhere the fire station is. And there's a couple pads in there that I think Eversource has. They may have some of that property too, but I'd have to, I, I, we have to look at the town maps to really, I don't know exactly where it is and who the property owner is without looking at that. Yeah. Okay. So Kate, does that make sense? No, that's great. And I think, you know, I have not seen any plans for development on this site. And the purpose of the ANRAD is to not um, account for any development, at least in our review. So you know, I'm looking at this with the assumption that we need to know all of these areas. Um, and, and, you know, I don't know where a road's going to go in. I don't know where buildings yeah. are going to go. And we have to, I think we should need to treat it like that um, because of the type of application it is. Yeah, because the NRAD is for the delineation, right? And, and I believe Fred, we're working up, you'd be working on an NOI down the road. We have everything ready, Pete. Everything, Every ready. Okay. Everything's ready to submit. We're ready to go to planning. We're ready to come back to you guys with NOI. 
everything is just ready. We're waiting for this. Okay. All right. So we got a little bit on the east side. We got to tie up. Um, go ahead, Kate. You had four or five other points. Yeah. And, and then the other points are, are actually, you know, I think pretty minor in nature. These are just flag notations. Um, we don't, I don't know if we need to go through every single one of them. I know it's getting late, but essentially, you know, adding a flag. So between two flags, the G11 and the G12, there's a little bit of an area where the hydric soil is creeped up. You know, we're talking about five feet in most areas. You know, it's very small, very minimal, the deviation. Um, there's an area where there was some rutting that happened. It looks like it might have been happening as part of some soil investigation work, the ruts. And it probably was done after Fred was out there. And just because of the depression of the soil, you then have the uh, characteristics of hydric soil in that location and hydrology. So uh, looking, at, looking at that area that was um, in the G10 area, and then uh, J13 and J12. Um, this one was interesting because you had, uh, there was a test pit there, T1, P1. And the test pit location is clearly upland, um, but I don't know if there's been additional ponding. You could see water stained leaves, which were just below the test pit, like a foot below the test pit. So um, I would recommend that the wetland be um, amended to include that low spot that had the hydric soils and the water stained leaves. I also had a royal fern in that location, which is an obligate species. Uh, between flag 21A and uh, was it 21A and J, let's see, uh, between flags J21 and J22, adding it maybe a, a 21A flag, uh, five feet up gradient. There's some soils again there with some redox features and um, would meet the hydric soil criteria. And another, the last thing was just noting that I saw some uh, ponding water out there, um, which was at BBW F31 in that location. And uh, it didn't appear to have a, a defined outlet. And um, just to keep in mind, I mentioned this because we're, you'll be looking at future applications, but I don't know if this is a vernal pool and it operates as, as such. And so if any development ends up being in that location, I just wanted to bring it to the commission's attention as that was something that was observed. Um, otherwise, you know, okay. it, it was, so it was actually a very pleasant review and, um, it was nice to have everything so well done out there. So thank you, Fred. Mm -hmm. thank you. Thanks, Kate. So Fred, on the items four, five, six, and seven were more flagging uh, issues. That's something you can no, that's, that's pretty address. Quick. Yeah. And then on the vernal pool, is that in an area where you guys are looking at any, um, development construction or is I believe so yeah i don't have the plan in front of me i think that's that is that the area that's out by the road no if you were to go um straight back into the site from the the largest culvert with the perennial stream yeah and hit that next band of wetlands that's behind that it's uh it's what's one of those fingers there oh it's inside one of those fingers yeah so it's within the wetland boundary Okay, I'll, I'll look at that. Yeah, that might be a, another issue on your plants when you get to the next state stage. We looked at all that standing water in there. There's definitely no vernal pools in there. Um, we dug, we looked in extensively this spring, but we'll, we'll deal with it when the time comes. Okay, anything else from Brad, Ken, Kate? Or I turn it over to the commissioners. So I, I have some questions, Pete. So where are we at with this? I mean, are we if Fred gets this stuff done by next Thursday, are we looking to get, are you guys willing to move forward on this or, or where are we at? Um yeah, as far as the NRAD, you know, we gotta fill in the dots on that eastern side that Kate talked about here going across to across the road. I mean, for the NRAD part of it, we're looking at is a delineation complete and correct. Um, so there's a few things to be done. Kate pointed out a couple of things, but Kate, if, correct me if I'm wrong, but we would be saying that the with the NRAD determination 
um, that the delineation we would agree with or not agree with or whatnot. Um, and then we would, they would take the next step into your, to your NOI and then we take it up from there. Is that correct in my understanding, Kate? Correct. Um, when is your next meeting? Uh, next Thursday, the 17th. Okay. So, you know, cause I was thinking if you were further out, um, you know, another option could even be, it sounds like Ken, you're, you're in a good hurry here. Um, you know, you could even be submitting both applications as long as, you know, we have time to, re like, I can take a look and review at the, review the plans. Um, you can start the NOI process even going concurrently. Uh, it's not the optimal way to go about it, but, um, you know, as long as we look at the plans, then the line really shouldn't change. The boundaries, the jurisdictional areas shouldn't change. And, um, you know, at the next meeting, you could always close the ANRAD and make a decision on that. And then you could also review the notice of intent immediately thereafter if you wanted to really yeah. pick it up um, and Yeah, so, so what you said, we could submit the NOI before next Thursday. We would probably wouldn't, be, wouldn't have time to review it, but we could add it on to the, we can early December, mid-December meeting. Um, but we can probably finish up the delineation. Kate, would you have time to look at, you know, what Fred updates uh, early next week before next Thursday? Yeah, and I could even meet yeah. anybody out there if necessary. You know, once, if Fred, you know a date that you're going out there, we can plan to meet. Once you've had some time to look at these areas, I can pop out there with you um, on that yeah, same day, just, just kind of clean it all up right at once. Yeah, I yeah. can give you Okay, so you, you can arrange that uh, between Fred and Kate, but I think at that point we have what the intent of the ANRAD is, is to see if we agree on the delineation. Um, so I think other than those few little items here, uh, one might be a little bit more than little. We got to look at that um, riverfront area. Um, but then we can go from there and I think we can move right into the NOI review and discussion. A lot of it's probably done, but we'd have to look at the NOI with a lot more of the details and such if you have all that together. That'll just take some time. I that makes sense, Ken? Yeah, Pete, I think um, John Furman from VHB who's doing all the civil work, um, we've talked extensively about this. Um, I think we wanna just make sure that this, wait till this ANRAD gets approved. Um, yeah. the delineation is good before we move forward with any more applications. Uh, we wanna have this solidified and done and then, because that's the whole purpose of it. And then we'll move, yeah. forward, we'll move forward with the other applications. Yeah, and Kate, this would be the same as uh, any other RDA determination. The wetlands are good for three years, right? Uh, correct, or, or it can be extended if, if it can be extended, before right. it expires. Yeah. And this was it, this is an order versus a determination, so it actually holds more um, substantial weight in terms of its its validity. Oh, that's true too. Yeah, you're right. Okay. Um, well, if Kate's up to it, and the other commissioners are up to it, I think we can, uh, you know, take another closer look at all your information early next week and be ready for Thursday. Are there any comments from the commissioners on on? before I sign you up for this. <laughs> I don't see anything from Kate or Sean, anything from Ben, no. So I guess mm -hmm. then um, at this point, we would go for a continuation of the public hearing till next week when we, and uh, we'll put you on the agenda for that and uh, grab a motion for that. Sure. A motion uh, to continue the hearing on the ANRAD filed by Ken Bukian to the next regularly scheduled Conservation Commission meeting on uh, November 17th, 2022. Okay, do I hear a second to that motion? Okay, Devlin, I'll second. Good. Motion on the table. Any other comments from the commissioners before we go to a vote? Hearing none, I'll take a roll call vote on the motion to continue this hearing until next Thursday, the 17th. Uh, Kate Devlin. Kate Devlin, aye. Sean Libby. Sean Libby, aye. Ben Byrne. Ben Byrne, aye. Uh, Pete Law, aye. 
So good, motion passed. So we'll pick it up again next Thursday. Uh, Fred, Ken, Kate, as soon as you get all the information in, Amy, make sure everybody gets it uh, as soon as it's in and to the commissioners and we'll we'll get our eyes on it and um, hopefully be ready for first thing on Thursday of next week. We'll have two, two hearings next week to all states and yourself and some other general topics. So it should be fairly quick. I don't think we'll be so late next Thursday. Mm -hmm. okay. okay. Sound good, Thanks. everybody? Sounds good. I'd like to thank the commission. And I also like to thank um, Kate for getting out there in such a timely fashion and helping us with this project. Yeah, that's good. Good. We're getting there. Yeah. Getting there. All right. Okay. Thanks. Thank we'll you. see, right. see you next week. All right. Week, everyone. Thanks, everybody. Bye bye. Right. Um, thanks, Kate. We'll talk soon. Sounds good. Take care. Bye. All right. Uh, for the commissioners, there were just some other just real quick general discussions. These were just to update you all, and I'll just pop through them real quick. Um, we had a submittal in, um, I guess, to the planning board. I forget who it works, actually went to. Um, but there was some stormwater for the uh, veterinary emergency and specialty hospital on Route 5 uh, building expansion. Uh, planning board was looking for comments. Um, we reviewed it and there is no, no wetlands application to where they're uh, looking to expand their parking lot. Um, they did put on their plans that they needed some erosion controls just in case uh, for sediment. So I sent off just our general um, conditions, if you will, our general uh, verbiage on erosion controls to um, Anna Lee. Uh, they may or may not incorporate it into their project, but just want to let you know if that one comes up, there was no direct application to us. Um, Atlas Farm on River Road. Again, this is just a notice. Uh, a concern was filed with the DEP. DEP Tom contacted me to see if I knew anything about it. Um, he's looking into it, some details. Um, there's some discharge questions um, close to the Connecticut River. It might come back to us, it might not. Um, I'm waiting to hear back from Tom at DEP. Uh, DCR uh, survey requests for um, some forestry surveys. Uh, I think Amy sent that over to you, Sean. Is that something that you would want to handle given your position or are you too close and don't want to handle it? Made it. <laughs> it, uh, it, is, made it. It is for, uh, yeah, it is. It is for, um, it may be just one of our commissioners can take it. I mean, it's really uh, what our general interest in, uh, in some of the forestry stuff is. When we have like slower meetings, I can, I'm more than happy to review uh all the 132 issues um i thought okay. maybe kate or ben could take it is a fast survey um you know and i wouldn't even answer some of the questions and it asks about perception of logging and concerns with logging it's really um well maybe we'll put it on to next week and if we have time we'll we'll come back to it how's that yeah yeah, okay. it'd be good to review the questions with the committee, and yeah. then we have an idea of uh, what our that I could take it for us. Um, at that okay, point. great, good. Okay, so Amy, we'll add that for next week. Um, enforcement action letter for Map One Thirty Two, lots twenty nine and thirty, up on Route Five and Ten. Um, finally, got the letter back from everybody's review, and uh, I believe Amy forwarded it on Monday or Tuesday of this week. Monday, I believe. Um, haven't heard any comments back on it. So um, that draft letter, as you all saw, was sent with a few additional um, details from the lawyers to make it lawyerly right, but that's out there. The North Main Street Park, um, that is, as you know, within the DEP review, uh, as it was appealed, uh, DEP um, set up a visit this past Tuesday at the site. Um, Sean and I attended that along with select board member um, consultants, um, three or four DEP folks, and and some of the opponents to the uh, project as well. Um, it was a full site walk um, that actually Sean and I left about two o'clock that afternoon. So it went from about 10 to two, um, went over a lot of details. DEP was not saying anything one way or another. It was just kind of a ge general discussion for them, come see what was out there. 
make some odd observations. They did some soil pits. Um, they took some samples, a lot of pictures and so forth. They will be going back to their office, sending out their observation comments to the applicant, which in this case is the town of Deerfield, um, as well as their consultants. Uh, I'm sure we'll be copied on all of that. Uh, they'll look for a reply and then DEP will reply back with their findings and uh, we're playing ping pong for a while still, but it's moving along. <laughs> so we shall see. And uh, Sean, you are there. Any other thoughts? No. It's about well, it, right? <laughs> it's so hard to tell how it's going to shake out, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, it is. Well, stay tuned. Well, um, I had one question on that. With, doesn't the uh, wetland delineation time out prior to, I mean, is that something that the board will have to continue, you know, or extend? It, uh, is that an I, issue? I asked that question to a few people, and the, the basic answer is that depends. <laughs> okay. Were, it, uh, was the initial delineation good? Um, you know, well, the initial well? delineation was done, accepted, approved, okay. and put in place. Uh, and it runs out, I believe, next September of 2023. Um, there's a lawsuit that comes up in 2023 for a, an unrelated thing, not wetlands, but it's still on the yeah. project. Uh, how DEP, they could apparently with this suggest to do additional delineations or new delineation, or the town may want to do it on their own delineation on their own, just update. So it's, they may time out on what was done three years ago, but there may be other moving parts between now and then. Yeah. So that yeah. one will stay tuned. Kate, did you have a question or? Um, I was just going to ask if, if um, the um, landowner adjacent showed up because there was that back and forth with the letter with the lawyers. Uh, yeah, so the lawyers converse for the between the two teams for the first 15, 20 minutes, and then uh, they allowed the uh, the homeowner and her attorney to accompany the group on the site walks. They had three or four wetland specialists there that were not allowed to go onto the site, but were allowed to look at pictures and ask questions. So it was kind of a a mixed thing. Okay, I was just curious. Um, Stillwater Bridge comments. It's totally on me. I got to get them out. I think Monday's my last day. So, uh, Amy, they'll be coming your way. And just, as we talked about last two weeks ago, just general comments that we expect them to adhere to well, all of the Wetlands Protection Act requirements and and so forth, and um, and to point out the sensitivity of the. Deerfield River and the, the, the importance to the river to Deerfield for recreational and um, aspects and other, you know, things of that nature. So I just need to sit down and write it. So that's still on me. Um, Treehouse Brewery erosion control. Last time we thought about that, uh, we talked about that. They were a little concerned. They were confused a little bit, little bit on the letter I sent out. I've discussed it via email with uh, one of the owners this past week and we're we're in pretty good shape. Uh, it's got the understanding. And I just sent him a note yesterday. I said, you know, at this point, I would suggest maybe we could get together with some of the commissioners, um, just walk the road control area one more time, uh, you know, with, with the owner and their um, consultant and just make sure that we're all good to go. There might be a few areas that we want to continue with the erosion control for a while still, but um, it was a nice, Nice back and forth. They want to be cooperative. Uh, want to do whatever we wish them to do to continue. So we may have a site visit. I, I threw out a couple of days next week or maybe after the holiday. And then the general terms and conditions that I tried to pull up here and talked about, I've worked on a little bit, but I will get those out to the commissioners here pretty soon to uh, take a review, uh, one last review to see those. We can get those in place. Uh, we didn't have any new mail, uh, no new items in the last 48 hours that I know of. Upcoming meeting will be next Thursday, 17th at 7 p.m. So unless you guys have any other further comments, we'll take a motion to adjourn. So it's up to you all.
make a motion to adjourn this meeting at 9 24 p.m until our next regularly scheduled meeting on november 17th at 7 p.m great to have a second john libby second all right motion on the table no further comment take a roll call to accept kate devlin kate devlin aye sean libby aye ben burn ben burn aye yeah pete law aye okay